By the time I reached the door that led toward the inside of the train station, the chatter behind me grew louder until I heard a familiar name being called out several times. I stopped in my tracks and turned to find a small crowd of excited people surrounding Quinn on the other side of the platform. His back was toward me at that point, but it was apparent he was laughing and smiling with the crowd, the screens of their phones catching his every move, some lucky enough to even get a selfie with him. Shocked, I watched as he took several of their pens and scribbled what I assumed was his name across newspapers and notebooks and pretty much anything they could find for him to sign. Was Quinn Bailey someone important? Or more than that, someone famous? I felt like an idiot for not understanding why the person I'd just spent most of my night with was being treated like royalty. Without drawing any attention to myself, I exited the platform and found a quiet, secluded spot inside the train station to pull my cell phone out of my purse. And then I did what anyone in my situation would do. I consulted Google. My fingers tapped out the letters of his name until Quinn Bailey stood proud in the search bar. With one quick tap to the enter button, Google gave me everything I needed to know. About 1.5 million search results, to be exact. My eyes read the first little snippet of a result, which just so happened to be Quinn Bailey's Wikipedia page. Quinn Matthias Bailey is an American football quarterback for the New York Mavericks of the National Football League. Holy moly, he was a professional athlete. I honestly wasn't an expert when it came to anything sports-related, but I knew enough to know that NFL meant he was a huge deal. And I was reasonably certain the quarterback was pretty much the most important guy on the team. Quinn Bailey was an NFL quarterback— for the New York freaking Mavericks, and I'd just spent four hours talking to him like he was just some regular guy off the street. How had I not asked what he did for a living? Was I that distracted by his good looks and easy lead of the conversation? Not to mention, I'd given him my phone number with the internal hope that there was an actual chance he'd call me and ask me out on a date. The outlook of a phone call from Quinn was feeling less positive by the second. I mean, didn't celebrities and famous people generally stick to each other? I was a flight attendant from Cincinnati, not Selena Gomez. My life was probably boring compared to what Quinn saw on a daily basis. Hell, the only red carpet event I'd been to was Black Friday at Target. Had I really just spent an entire night sitting next to this guy? He hadn't even hinted at the fact that he was someone whose handsome face was known by millions of people across the world. The whole thing was surreal. I had a flight to catch, and that meant I didn't have time for OCD-level fixation and overanalyzing. But as I grabbed my carry-on and headed toward the taxi line, I couldn't stop myself from thinking, yeah, probably don't hold your breath waiting for Mr. Famous Quarterback to call you.